The combat vehicles in Warhammer 40,000 have been going through a lot of changes in the last couple years. And going in the 9th edition, they've actually received a lot of different design changes and buffs to make them seem more unique and flavorful. Wait, what are you doing? No! GW, no! No, wait! What are you doing? You can't just buff vehicles! They're already performing better than everything else! Oh god! No! You can't just let them fire in combat! Oh my god! They're gonna kill everybody! Somebody's gotta stop them! Oh no! Not the Defilers! No! No! And to help do this, they've added a few new features to tanks, like ignoring the penalty to moving and shooting, and shooting at people in close combat with them. Huh. Alright. Because nothing says main battle tank like ramming yourself into a crowd of people just to fire your main gun. So what can GW do to make tanks feel more like tanks? Let's start with what I think is holding them back from a design standpoint. In 8th edition, they generalized all the profiles to be using the same set of statistics to determine how strong something is. Essentially, they just gave them all the same stat so you could know what your weapon would do no matter what it was shooting at. Which is a great system for abstracting how it is to shoot at a living target. No matter how tough you are, you still got a chance to be dropped by that bullet. You would rather just not be shot. But tanks aren't living creatures. They're a vehicle. It's a car with armor. And to that extent, they perform a very different role in the battlefield to infantry and even air assets. So, when 40k decides to give monsters, walkers, infantry, and tanks all the same general stat line, it sure goes a long way to make your tanks feel less special when you can look across the board and you can see some 10 foot tall superhuman who's just as armored despite not actually being a 500 ton war machine. Which is why when you see discussions online saying, hey, what should I take with my army? What vehicle supports my list the best? It's never a role they're trying to fulfill. It's how much damage does this do and how many points is it going to cost you? So how do we fix this? It's not as hard as you'd think. You just got to add more rules. It's never going to be very interesting to be picking, do you want two LAS cannons on a T7 vehicle or two LAS cannons on your T8 vehicle? You're just doing the math in your head. I'm this likely to survive this many LAS cannons. The good news is, this isn't really a field that lacks content, they're not really treading any new ground here. You can rip straight from history and find lots of interesting concepts for vehicle design. When you look at tanks when they were first introduced on the battlefields, they were historically all about armor. You were strapping as much armor onto a vehicle as you could to drive through enemy fire. I mean, just ask the Germans. And this design kind of followed a very similar pattern to plate mail in history. When you invented plate mail, you were pretty much a godless killing machine. Nothing could hurt you, and you were very hard to bring down. That is until some guy bought some spicy Chinese sand and blew a hole in your chest. <laughs> Having the baddest, most armored tank was really cool until gun design caught up and you are able to blast holes right through its armor. After that, designers really lend themselves more to making something too fast to be hit or able to relocate so you couldn't track it down to shoot with your big guns. On modern tanks, you still see that same design sentiment, but now they add advanced defense systems like AMS or Chobe Armor that'll help defend against the actual hit from getting to the armor to begin with. All these historical design philosophies work so well in the 40k setting. With all these different factions at different states of technological design, it'd be very easy to give the vehicles of a faction a specific theming or just a design philosophy to abstract into the game. It really wouldn't compromise any design of the Imperial Guard Lehman Russ to add armor to the front of the tank. Every direction you hit the Imperial Guard Lehman Russ from has the same durability. Historically speaking, these big, slow, armored tanks had a very heavy frontal armor to help defend against anti-tank rounds. So why not just add some toughness when a vehicle takes a shot from the front? The annoying thing is, in the past, GW had a system designed around this, armor values. And that more or less made it very difficult to shoot heavily armored vehicles from the front, and many vehicles had various defense profiles based on what direction you shot at it from. It'd be really easy for me to sit here and tell you guys path good and GW bad. So instead of that, I'm just going to recommend things they could do in the current setting, the current rule system, that would make taking a vehicle seem more impactful than just picking a big block of stats. If you take all the vehicles in the guard lineup and slow them down and add more armor to them, make them more durable from the front, you've now themed the faction. The faction now has a very distinct feel to their tanks that'll separate it from other big stat block units. 
never again will you be just comparing Wow, you know, my Lehman Russ is T8, and so is that Tyrannifix, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, depending on the weapon system, it's a little different, but, but we both fire twice, and I, I cost less points, so I'm just better than that is. Create Asymmetry. One of my fondest memories of gameplay in the past of 40k is running Ball Predators. My friend played Lehman Russ tanks, and they had much better guns, they were much better armored, and they were very difficult for me to win on a straight up fight. So I just didn't. My tanks were faster, so I drove up the left and right flanks of the battlefield, forcing him to either turn his tanks to fight my tanks, or keep their front armor pointed towards the rest of my army. Meaning no matter which direction he was facing, I had an asset that was able to fire at his weaker side armor. And it's that easy to make two units feel very different and have different power levels, but not feel defenseless. The key is positioning. It's why you see so many castles taking very prevalent places in the meta. When it doesn't matter where a unit is on the board when it's firing and what direction it's taking damage from, there is less value to mobility on vehicles. Most anti-tank weapons have absurdly long range, so why would they ever bother to move from where they are when they can just stand still in a big ball with the rest of their army and destroy your vehicle? Another fun dynamic this creates when you have different armor values and toughness values for what direction you're taking hits from allows infantry to have a much greater role and impact against the enemy's tanks. One of the big complaints you saw coming out of 8th edition were people being very frustrated with their tanks being unable to defend themselves from infantry being all around them. And historically speaking, that's more or less accurate. Tanks were never really that great at taking on large groups of infantry. Many vehicles that found themselves isolated and surrounded were usually destroyed. In fact, a lot of the actual tank kills accredited in World War II were not done on tank-on-tank -tank engagements. They were done by man-portable anti-tank. When you have a combined arms games like 40k featuring infantry, vehicles, air power, and everything combined, it becomes very important to have a weakness built into this vehicle. If infantry can get too close and really maim this vehicle, it forces the enemy to think about screening this, putting more infantry to prevent that. They slam a grenade through the thin side armor. And it's all yours, Adolf. In the past, GW's tanks just ignored close combat. They would just drive on through infantry units and they would just keep firing. Which isn't the worst solution, but I can see how that's kind of frustrating for people. Where, you know, you're trying to tie down the enemy and it'll just do whatever it wants. Which is why in the current edition, I think the best way to handle this is allow vehicles to move out of combat still but incur some sort of melee debuff. Allow them to take hits on the way out, or automatically suffer one hit from each unit. Give it some penalty for driving on through something that should be very dangerous to it, but also represent the fact that infantry couldn't stop it. It's a heavy vehicle. And that again allows you to differentiate, say, an Eldar vehicle that hovers. It might not need to take those hits because it can fly out of combat instead. I think it would also help to add some sort of vulnerabilities to a vehicle class. Maybe add more weapon types that have special effects against it. Kind of like how Haywire works, where when a Haywire weapon hits a vehicle, it has a chance of doing more mortal wounds. Those kind of things add an extra layer of complication, and you have to learn more special rules and interactions. But the player base is smart enough for that. Acting like the player base can't handle more than one set of weapon profiles is insane to me. A lot of the players will already just Google the statistics for how weapons work and take the mathematically best option, so it's not like we're living in 1992 where the information isn't out there. People who struggle can just Google their problems. This is really only one example for what you could do for a high mobility faction like the Dark Eldar. You could add more invo saves to a vehicle and then make it a little less durable, and that's a good way of abstracting how the vehicle is nimble and dodges a lot of fire. It really is a win-win for GW. The more rules they add to specific factions, the more people will really enjoy playing their factions and find playstyles that match them. It also helps people with their own identity. When you are like used to using a vehicle that is faster than everyone else's and then suddenly everyone's vehicles are fast or everyone's vehicles are treated the same way, you can leave yourself open to these people who are finding no joy in the game anymore. Looking at saying they're like, I have an Eldar unit that just doesn't perform the same way these new Primaris units do. And there is no redeeming factor to it, because you're just looking at the calculus of this unit deals this much damage, and that's all that matters. You need to add more things than just damage that'll matter. As lame as it sounds, everyone does want to be unique sometimes. Thanks for listening, guys.